If the facade pattern is integral to web application development, then the same has to be said for the observer pattern. This defines an object that we call the subject, and it notifies other objects when its state changes. And we call these other objects observers, thus the observer pattern. Now that basically describes events and both JavaScript and the DOM are heavily event-driven. So without the observer pattern, we don't have events. There are several variations of the observer pattern, but the one that is predominantly used in JavaScript and the DOM is called publish subscribe. For example, whenever you set up an events listener, you are subscribing to the subject's event. So here I have set up an event listener for the documents click event. The subject is the document object and the observer is our function. Then when the click event occurs, the document publishes that event. In this lesson, we're going to write a generic publish and subscribe manager. Now, if you've watched the object oriented JavaScript course here at Tuts Plus, you would have written a data type called event target. It's a base data type that you can use to inherit other data types from to add custom events to those data types. Well, what we are going to write in this lesson is different from that event target data type. It's the same basic idea, but this implementation is going to be more generic, so you can use it in more places. And I'm going to write this as an AMD module. Let's start by calling our define function, and we don't need any dependencies for this module. Now, there are three things that we need to provide functionality for. We need to be able to subscribe, unsubscribe, and publish. So let's go ahead and define these three functions. We'll call the first subscribe, and we need some parameters here. We first of all need to know what we are subscribing to, or the event, if you will. So let's call the first parameter type, and then we need the function to execute whenever we publish the event for that particular type. We need the unsubscribe function, so we will call this unsubscribe, and we need the same information. We need the type as well as the function. And then finally, we need a function to publish, and we will just call it publish. We first of all need to know the type that we are publishing for, but then we also need to pass something to the subscribers. And in the DOM API, that's usually done with an event object. So we will replicate that with our own event object. And now that we have defined these three functions, let's go ahead and write our return statement. The methods on this object are going to match our three functions. So subscribe is going to be set to subscribe. We will of course have an unsubscribe method, which is unsubscribed. And then finally, the publish method is set to publish. Now we need some way to keep track of our subscribers, and we can do that with a variable. So let's create one called subscribers, and we're going to set this to an object. And the type that is passed to subscribe, unsubscribe, and publish are going to be properties on this subscribers object. Let's implement the subscribe function. We first want to check to see if we have a property with our type parameter. So if not subscribers, we will use bracket syntax and the type parameter. If we don't have that property, then we simply want to create it. And we will set that to an array. Now we want to add the function to this array, but we only want to add the function if it doesn't already exist within the array. So we can use the index of method to determine if we already have that function object. So index of, we will pass fn. If this is equal to negative one, then we know that this function does not exist, so we should add it to the array. And we will do that with the push method passing in the function. Now let's move on to the unsubscribe function. The process is going to be similar. We will first check to see if we have a property with our type. If we don't, then we are just going to return because we don't need to do anything else. But if we do, we want to ensure that we have that function in the array. If we do, then we will remove it from the array. So let's first of all retrieve the subscribers for this type. And I'm going to create a variable called listeners and we will simply use subscribers and type. And then we want to check to see if we have anything with this listeners variable. If we don't, then we will just return because we have nothing to do. Otherwise, let's get the index of the supplied function. So listeners, we will once again use the index of method passing in the function. And then we want to check to see if index is greater than negative one. 
If it is, then we want to remove it. And we will do that with the splice method. We will pass index, and we only want to return that one function. And finally, the publish function. Let's first check to see if we have a property of type. If we don't, then we want to return because we don't have anything to publish. Let's then check our event object. We want to see if we have a type property because if we don't, then we want to add one to this event object. So evt object dot type, then we will set that property to our type parameter. Then we will get the subscribers for this type. I'll call this variable listeners. And then we simply want to loop through everything in our listeners array and call that function. So we will use a for loop here. We'll create our counter variable. Let's also create a length variable, which is going to be set to listeners.length. We want this loop to iterate for as long as ii is less than ll. Then finally, we want to increment ii. And inside of the loop, we will simply call listeners ii and pass the event object to that function. And this is our module. It's rather simple, but it does what it needs to do. So let's move over to the lesson 14 JavaScript file. We are requiring the event manager, but there's a problem with my syntax. This is all one parameter instead of two, but that's easy enough to fix. Let's create a function called foo, and this needs to accept an event object. And let's just have this write to the console, and we'll say that our event object will have a message property. Next, we want to subscribe to an event. So we will call the subscribe method. And let's do a complex name like test because we are testing this and we'll call it test slash foo. And then we will pass the foo function as the second parameter. Then let's publish that event. So we will call the publish method. We want to publish test slash foo. And then we want to pass an object with a message property. And let's say that hello, this is a custom event. And after we publish, let's unsubscribe so that we can test that our unsubscribe code works. We will once again pass test slash foo and the foo function. And then finally, let's publish again. And then we will have the text that says this should not be seen. And that's because we already unsubscribed from this particular event. So hopefully we will not see this. So let's go to the browser, let's refresh, and we get an error. Types is not defined. That is in eventmanager.js line 8. So apparently I have some typos. And there it is. Types is used right there. And we can see that it is used once again in the same function. Let's quickly look to see if I use types anywhere else. I did not. So let's save this. Let's go back to the browser and refresh. And we get the same thing. I could have sworn I changed that. So let's do a quick search for types once again. The red box here says, or at least the red outline, says that there are no matches for type. So maybe I just refreshed before the file was actually saved. Let's refresh. And there we go. Hello, this is a custom event. But notice we didn't get the second message. And that's very good because our unsubscribe code worked. I like this implementation of the publish and subscribe observer because it allows us to have these complex names. And that's very useful if we wanted to use this as a basis for more higher level event systems. Like say we were writing a component, we could namespace our event names. The first segment could be the component's name and then the second segment could be the event's name. Or we can have many segments here. This implementation is flexible enough to meet just about all of our needs. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, the observer pattern is essential for web development, not only because it's what JavaScript and the DOM uses, but because it allows us to decouple objects from one another. And as you saw in this lesson, it's very easy to implement, but it's also very powerful.